Okay, uh, let's see if this thing, uh, this thing transmits. Um, so I've got my uh, analyzer set up to receive on an antenna and uh, it's going into a audio frequency analyzer. It's going to automatically recognize the frequency being transmitted and display it here. Um, it'll display the deviation and the audio frequency that it hears and uh, it should come out the uh, come out the speaker so um, anytime you do uh, on-air transmissions you should identify yourself you should be an amateur radio licensed amateur radio uh, amateur radio operator and I'm using um, a, a 440 simplex frequency of one of uh, 445.9125 uh, that's been programmed into the uh, uh, into the radio. Um, so let me identify. This is a testing. Hello test. Hello test. Hello test. Hello test. Testing one two three. Hello test. Hello test. Okay, so uh, every time you transmit, you should identify yourself. Um, and so I'll do that. This is a testing. All right. Test, test, test. Hello, test. Hello, test. Test, test, test. And I can hear myself. So it seems to be transmitting. It's a little bit off in frequency. Uh, should be 9125, I think. Uh, but otherwise, deviation of 5 kilohertz. And I'm, whist I'm whistling a uh, 1.5 kilohertz tone, I guess. Uh, so, uh, you can see that it is, uh, it is working. So, um, it is kind of uh, difficult to use this thing because you don't know what channel you're on. There's no display, so you have to like punch the buttons. Oop. Four, three, two, one. One. So I have these in order. So one, two, three, four. So, uh, yeah. So it does seem to work. Um, I was actually able to reach a repeater and it does seem to have subtones and all that kind of stuff and uh, you can do duplex and, and the whole thing. Um, the problem, problem with any other tests, I like to measure power and I like to measure the, uh, oh, somebody on the frequency or is it me? Um, I'd like to measure the frequency uh, the uh, uh, power out of this and also I could measure the receiver sensitivity this has a cyanide test in it oh maybe there's somebody uh, somebody on simplex or maybe it's maybe it's this thing interesting so what's really cool is uh, I could go to the uh, function generator here. Let's see here. And I can go, I have it at 445.9125. And uh, I have a 800 hertz tone. Um, and I want to set that to FM modulation. So FM, three kilohertz, we'll change that to five kilohertz. It seems like that's what it wants. Um, and then we can turn, oops, five kilohertz. We can turn the amplitude on. So the way that I have this set up is that uh, it's going nowhere. Uh, it's going into its internal uh, attenuator, but there's nothing hooked to the, to the output, okay? And so let's turn the, amplitude on to uh, let's say minus 80. Oh, there you go. So, whoa, that's very loud. Wow. So even at minus 90 dBm, 
if I get close to that kind of here, I can start to hear it. So the receive sensitivity on this thing seems to be pretty good. I don't think there's much RF coming out of that little, uh, little connector there. Let's see, let's go to, uh, let's go to 80. Let's go to uh, audio. Uh, that's pretty cool. So anyway, receive seems to work. Transmit seems to work. Uh, the programmability seems to work. Uh, so I think the next step is going to be um, putting an SMA connector on the antenna. Then we can measure its power and receive sensitivity and things like that. So let's go ahead and mod this thing. All right, before I open it up, uh, let's do an on-air test with the uh, spectrum analyzer. I have an antenna uh, connected to the input here. And uh, this is a nice, fast spectrum analyzer, so we should be able to see pretty good stuff. So let's see here, frequency of one, uh, four, four, whoops. Uh, frequency of four, four, five dot nine, one, two, five megahertz, span of a hundred kilohertz. And uh, let's, so uh, let's give it a try. Maybe six testing, test, test, test. You can see the uh, see the modulation. Uh, let's change the uh, let's change the amplitude up a bit. There we go. All right. Test test test. Hello. Let's turn on uh, max hold. I'll turn on max hold. Hello, and then see how wide of the modulation it is. Ending test. All right, there we go. So we can turn on some markers. Am I in the way of the camera? Probably. Uh, marker, uh, current marker. Let's go here, down to here. Uh, delta marker. And so we're looking at about a uh, 17 kilohertz. So plus and minus five, plus and minus. That's about, that's bigger than that, so. Plus minus eight, 10 killer, maybe it's 10 KCs down at the bottom or something like that. Um, yeah, anyway. All right, now let's open it up. <laughs> That's noisy. All right, um, let's see, let's pull the knob off and open this back. Open the back, there we go. So I've got a long wire on the speaker so I can take it in and out easily. Um, so what I found out was this, uh, this uh, shield here, it might be, it might be acting, it might be acting as a shield, but it, I think what it is is, so when this thing goes into a drop in charger, there's a little bit of weight to hold it down in the charger. I think that might be all it is. Uh, but I think I'll put my, uh, I think I'll put my uh, butchered shield back on, onto the part before I, do any more tests, I think it'd probably be good to have that shielded. And uh, let's see here, how do we, how do we get this thing out? How do we get it out? I got it out yesterday. There it goes, get in the hole here. There we go. Come on, came right out yesterday. There it goes. All right, see the wire allow me to open it up here. So we'll see if we can't put a little SMA connector there and maybe grind the top of this uh, case off and make it into a radio that we can add anten antennas to. That might be fun, but I think I'll I think I'll try to straighten that straighten that back out and uh, put it down there. So let's do that. Favorite hammer. I don't know if you have one of these bench blocks, but uh, they're quite handy. I use mine all the time. 
This is an official Starrett one. You can get Chinese knockoffs or Indian ones from India knockoffs, but uh, they're not as good as these. Um, these are these are way heavier and uh, way harder. They are definitely case hardened or some kind of hardened. All right, let's see here. I probably shouldn't have butchered this all that much when I probably should have been nicer to it. But I wasn't. I was in a hurry. You know, my father, he he had the ultimate patience and stuff. I don't know if it was his generation or just him. I think it was just him. He had lots of patience. He was a master woodworker. He built amazing car cabinetry and stuff. And, um, he could take his time and things just came out really, really nice. There's me. Needs to be done in five seconds, otherwise I lose interest. There we go, that's a little better. Let's uh, see if we can't tap this down a little bit more. Probably should try to get something square and beat it on top of that. That looks pretty good. There's a little tab there. It's just an RF shield, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. There's a little tab there though. I think I think I didn't need to rip it off. I think all I needed to do is bend the tab and it would lift right off. <laughs> like I said, I don't have patience. Yeah, that little tab just goes right in there. Look at that. It's a beauty. So I think I'll solder it down. It wasn't soldered before. It was just in with a little tab. But I think I'll put a couple put a couple bits of solder on there. And, uh, let's see if we can't find a connector here. Let's see. SMA connectors. I've got lots and lots of these, so let's, let's use one of those. So, where do I put the ground? Hmm. This ground here and this thing over there, so I think I'll, I think I'll have to I'll have to maybe put it at an angle or something to grab a ground. Hmm. Or maybe put a little short wire. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's take this antenna off and see where to go from there. antenna came off easy enough. A nice spring. It's not wimpy wire. It's like a real, it's like a real spring. Okay. Where'd my SMA go? You're probably saying, hey dummy, it's right there. Oh, come on. I just, I just had it in my hand. There it is. Duh. You probably knew that. All right. Let's see here. Dunk, dunk. That there. And ground is right there, so it's not going to be easy. Hmm. I think I'll need to bend the center conductor down. There we go. 
So the center conductor will go there. And I think I will have to bridge. Looks like I'm bending these. I don't know if these will bend without breaking. I'm trying to bend these. Oh, they do bend a little bit. Oh, nope, they break. <laughs> I thought they would. All right, so let's snap those off. And kind of put this in. I want it to go straight out though. Oh, well, then I can't screw anything on. That'll be in the way. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to have to put a short little piece of wire there. I think I'll have to solder this down over here. All right. this little wire here. So I'll put that straight again. All right. Okay, now I just need to hold everything, which isn't always easy. But I have a secret. Oh. Use my little vise. And you probably can't see this, can you? Let's see here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here. And then it will, oh man, now this thing is in the way. Well, I thought that would work, but I guess it doesn't. Hmm. All right, plan B, plan B. These things get really hot when you slaughter them, so I'm going to grab it. You know, I've never broken any of these before. You can really clamp things and they don't seem to break. All right, let's see how we can do this. Lobs of solder on that. I think that'll be all right. A couple blobs of solder on this. All right. Now, trying to hold it all, trying to hold it all while messing up. All right. Oop. Let's see here. I need six hands again. I think. It's not exactly straight. I think that's better. I think that would be good. It's a little bit crooked, but who cares? That'll be fine. And now we just need a little short little piece of wire from there to there. And then we can add antennas or dummy loads or spectrum analyzers and all kinds of stuff. So let's get some wire out so we can so we can make this work. Okay. 
use a little piece of this. So, let's see here. Okay. I need a little bit smaller gauge. Let's try some 20 gauge. How does 20 gauge do? Perfect. All right. So. This wire is not wetting. There it goes. There we go. Cool. So now we have a W, L, N, what are they? C? I forget. C1s? Something like that. Anyway, so this will be like that. And we will need to take this thing off. So let's, uh, let's go put this on the bandsaw. <laughs> Put my earmuffs on. This thing's noisy. All right, uh, so we'll need to put a hole. What do you need to put a hole in the case over here? There's a hole here, but we need we need to move it over. So I'll put a hole in the case, and then uh, we should be able to should be able to work it out. Seems to fit. I think I'll put my weight back in and. Uh, bottom on. Oop. Oh shoot, dropped a little screw. Oh. I think this will go together. All right, one more screw. Oops, almost dropped it. Okay. 
All right. Let's put the uh, volume knob back on. Battery. Back on. Power on. One. All right. Works. So we need a we need an antenna now. But what we can do. Oh man, I have a messy, messy, messy desk because I have too many projects. I never seem to complete one project before I start another. Um, so, whatever goes well. Let's go ahead and use this as an antenna. So, this is my 30 dB. 5 watt attenuator, and we can hook it right up to the spectrum analyzer. Let's see here. Let's uh, turn spectrum analyzer on. And put this here. There we go. Where's my watch? All right. And let's turn it on. Power on. One. Yeah, it works. Okay. So let's see here. Let's change the spectrum analyzer to NTSC. Still haven't figured out how to save that. I looked in the manual, there's a way to do it, and I did it, but it doesn't stick. But then I looked at the future revisions of the ROM, and it seems like maybe it fixed that problem. So let me lower the camera here. And let's take a look over there. And let's transmit. And we get a really big thing there. So let's uh, change the amplitude here. All right. Very nice. And let's do a peak search. Peak right. There we go. We're getting uh, two and a half dBm. We have a 30 dB pad, so we're getting 32 and a half dBm. And 32 and a half dBm, 10 divided, da 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 da, is 1.7 watts. Um, which is way lower than it's set to. It's set for high power. It's set for five watts output, but it's only giving us uh, 1.8, 1.8 watts, according to that. So we could hook it up to power meter and see what it really is, but that don't look good. I don't see any spurs though. That's nice. I don't see any spurs at all. Let's change the amplitude up so I can see some spurs. There we go, there are some spurs. Yeah, there's some there. So, peak search, next peak. It, uh, let's see, this marker is at minus 50. We were at plus two and a half. So, minus 50, minus about minus 55 dBm. Seems okay. Somebody pointed out it's actually the total of all of the harmonics, but you know, that's another 10 dB down, so it's not going to add up to much. So, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, so now we have a working, uh, working radio with an SMA connector on it. So now we can go over to the, uh, uh, let's back out here. Now we can go over to the radio test set and measure the actual power out of this thing. It's much more accurate than a spectrum analyzer would be. So uh, yeah, let's go do that. Okay, so with this setup, we have a 60 watt attenuator in here, so we, do, we don't need the attenuator on the radio, so we're going straight into the instrument. We're gonna do a transmit test, and I'm gonna key down. And, oh, it helps if you turn on the radio. And, uh, there we go, 1.86 watts. Um, 
1.86 watts. So let's do manual tune. 445.9125 is the actual radio supposed to be. And we'll turn it on and then we can see our error here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, frequency test. Yeah, test frequency error, we're, we're minus 0.13 kilohertz low. So that, that's kind of fun. Yeah, 1.8 watts. Like I said, it's set to five watts. So I think they lie there. And uh, hello, test, test, hello, test, test, test. Testing one, two, three, test. So we've got deviations around four and a half, five. Um, yeah, there you go. So if you got one of these things, they lie. <laughs> they don't output five watts. Uh, all right, so now we can do a sign ad test, I think. I'm gonna have to uh, look to see how we connect an earphone up. So to do a sign ad test, you have to take the earphone output and run it over to here. Um, so that'll take some explaining to do. So I think I'll leave that for another video. Uh, sign ad tests are pretty weird and I haven't done that many of them actually in the past. Uh, I really don't care usually. Um, so we'll try to do that. Uh, there is a spec on this thing. I think it was something like 0.15 microvolts or 0.26 microvolts uh, at a sign out of 12. So we'll have to look at the spec and then we'll do the test and see if that, that uh, measures out or not. But pretty cool. We can try different antennas out. Antennas out. Uh, although, I don't know if... Wait. Better antennas are better, so I'm not sure if that's very exciting or not. Exciting or not. I think it's more, more exciting to do actual tests on it. So we'll leave that to the next video. All right, in case that was a little hard to read back there, I'll do it again. Uh, we'll key down uh, our frequency error. Oh, it's drifted off a bit too. Now it's minus 0.4 kilohertz, so it's uh, 400 hertz low. And uh, transmit power is 1.8 watts. And then as I talk into it, and we can turn down the volume so I don't feedback here. Hello, hello, test, test. We're going to be at five kilohertz of deviation. And if I try to whistle a tone, we got our 1.5 kilohertz. I guess that's what I like to whistle. Um, anyway, there we go.